Okay, this is W5HRO. I got the majority of this thing put back together. The RF deck still needs work, but everything else from the speech amp all the way down to the supplies is, is fully functional now again. Um, there's the T368 exciter rack that I'm going to build. See, I've got the new, uh, the new shelf in there, and the supplies are going to be mounted around it and next to it. Uh, I do have the, the new panel for this. I've got to figure out how to, uh, here's the panel. i got to figure out how to uh, cut out the, the slot for the, because uh, I'm going to put this this uh, face plate on the front of the panel, because it'll look nice that way. So I've got to figure that out. That's what I'm going to do here next. I did order the new meters down here. I ordered two Simpsons. It takes about a month to get them in because they're special order from the factory. But I do have them coming. And uh, they're two Simpson meters, two new 50 microamp meters. That'll fix, that'll solve that problem. But anyway, um, here what I'm going to do is I decided what I can do with that old slot where I used to have the, uh, the, the I, I had grid input tuning when I used to drive this thing with an external transmitter to RF excited. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pot there with a knob and I'm going to make that the drive control because what I'm going to do is is I'm going to um, uh, connect to the screen of the 6000 you know, output tube and I'm going to control the screen voltage to control the drive to the 4400, right? So what I'll do is I'll just remote the pot. I'll put the pot here, run the cable down to where it connects down here. I might use like a solid state circuit to control the screen voltage. I haven't decided yet. I could use a little too, but we'll see. But I need to cut down lots of this transmitter anyway. But that's what I'll do. I'll just put the pot there and remotely I'll have a cable going back with a jack on the back of the chassis that plugs that comes that goes from that down to this other rack to control the screen. And I can put this old knob that was on here back on. It'll look like it used to, so perfect. I don't know why I didn't think about that before. I'll just make that the dry pot because that's where I used to tweak it to adjust the uh, the link couple tuning for the the grid current anyway. So I'll just put use that same hole. And then here's the back of it. I don't know if you can see or not. Uh, all the tubes are lit up. Ooh, look at the 810s, man. Pretty. And then there's the 4400. Right now, I still the, there's still a few components I still need to add to this, uh, uh, this RF deck. It's still not 100% finished. I was almost done with it a few years ago when I did all the modif modifications to it. And uh, what I've got now is, one of these is, I don't know which one is which. I think this is the plate and this is the screen. And the screen voltage is going to connect down to the cold side, the modulation transformer, the B+. And then the other one's the plate, of course. So I've eliminated the bias supply deck, and it's going to get its... Uh, it's going to get its bias just from the drop-in resistors and the... I've got components up in there, and I've got regulator tubes for sideband and everything. So uh, it's going to be cool. But I've got... There's a few more components I didn't add. But right now, it's, it's, it's powered up to where I've got grid bias on the tube, right? I mean, I've got, I've got the, the uh, grid leak resistor. There's like a 17.5K or an 18K grid, grid leak resistor to ground. And I think it's in this top position. Wait. I can hear the relay clicking. I just don't know which way is which. I've got to figure out which way is which. I think that's off. I think that's AM. I think that's grid link position there, but I'm not positive. I got to see which way it engages the coil, because whichever way it engages the coil is the way it is for class AB bias. The coil of the relay. So uh, anyway, I'm making progress, but uh, now I can work on this rack. And like I said, it's going to be a month before I get those new meters in below. And then I'll eventually I'm going to replace this one too. I'll get, after I get those meters replaced and get everything working then I'm going to replace this meter with a new one so it matches. It'll have it'll be a Simpson too. Then I'm eventually going to replace these old ones on the RF deck too with new Simpsons. It's just those meters aren't cheap. They're like a hundred bucks a piece and I'm not kidding. They're expensive. They still make them but they're expensive. They still make the three and a half inch round current meters. They're just damn expensive nowadays. So I just got to do a couple of them at a time you know. Till I get them all replaced with the same. I want all Simpson meters on this. The one down there for the modulator is not bad. It's like a, was it a Westinghouse? It was like a newer model. It's, it's in good shape. The other ones are old though. 
they all work except that one down. Now those those two down there are both bad. Uh, as a matter of fact, I plugged in, I turned it on again last night and tried to transmit, and this one on the left doesn't come up. And you have to, I used to have to tap on it really hard sometimes. And the other day when I finally got this going, I had I banged on it really hard and it wouldn't come up. That's why I started shorting the meter across to see if I could figure out what was going on. And it's definitely the meter is just bad. Then I fried the other one on the right, so I got to replace both of them because I don't. You know, I don't. I'm not just going to replace one of them. I want both the meters to match, so I had to replace both of them at once anyway, even if only one of them was bad. So it's no big deal. That's why I didn't really care because I was expecting to do that anyway. So that's it for now. Uh, I think that's all I had. So this is W5HRO.